I also think adults forget how to play. Yes. It's really simple like that. They forget their playful self. And when you can invite them to come and play with a cardboard box or some stuff. I mean, <clears throat> there are many times when I will create some kind of an obstacle course on the third floor of the museum in that bridge area that's just wide open hallway kind of, right? There's a bunch of yoga mats and cones and hula hoops and balls and I don't know, whatever else I can find, little three wheelie things you can sit on and ride through and a couple of big cardboard boxes. Oftentimes, kids will come up there and look at it and go, what is that? And I'll say, well, what do you think it is? I don't know. Dora the Explorer doesn't have one of those. I'm like, okay, that's all you watch on TV is Dora the Explorer. You've never seen this before. And before you know it, oftentimes an adult will come up and just start kicking the ball or uh, picking up the hula hoop and saying, oh, I've never, I haven't done this in years and start doing the hula hoop, or if I pick up the hula hoop and start hula hooping, or sitting on the little three wheelie thing, or go down to the box and turn it so that I will say something like, can you kick the ball in the box? You know, just a little bit of cue like that will really help adults oftentimes to find that little playful self. And that actually pulls them right in without much. And before you know it, you've got kids and families in the obstacle course, creating their own family game, or challenging another family that they're visiting with, or something fun. But you have to kind of get, that's a, again, there's a provocation, mm -hmm. or a prompt, or a little something, or a little role modeling. It takes something, I don't know, how do we, how, we could call that a something, you know? Uh, you guys could make up the name for it. <laughs> You know, it is a prompt or a provocation to get involved. In some ways, it's the invitation. The Whether invitation, it's a direct right. invitation yeah. or it could it's be an like, invitation. That's a nice oh, way to... Oh, there's a room full of balloons. Right. <laughs> you know? Come on. Who in. needs much more of an invitation than a right. room full of balloons? So it might be a visual thing like mm -hmm. that, and it mm -hmm. might be an articulated invite. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. could be signage. Could be it the could big, be a the photo. big aprons versus the small aprons. Right. Kind of it could thing. be any kind of documentation of this is an invitation to for you to play. We have uh, we bought a set of Kiva planks. Have you seen them? We could look them up online mm -hmm. so you guys could see. Um, K E V A. And I have never seen an exhibit so there. This is family engagement. This is family learning at its best. I mean, you just look and see what's going on, and boom. We could even go um, see a picture uh, of the exhibit in the museum this morning as well. But they're just these this most beautiful, small, I don't know what they're made out of, maybe maple. They're kind of light, but just heavy enough. And they're literally plank. Some of them, most of them, are just plank shapes, like rectangles. Um, and... The buildings have been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So we put um, round tables on little short stubby legs on the floor, and then some um, just simple uh, mats, you know, for your knees or for your bum to sit and play. But I, I am not kidding. Parents, mm -hmm. babies, mm -hmm. the 15-year-old brother. So the other day I walked in and the like teenager had built something where he was standing. He was already well mm -hmm. over five feet tall, but on his way to being a six-foot tall teenager, standing on a stool. So he was building it. I mean, this thing was that big from the floor all the way up. So the thing was well over six feet mm -hmm. tall. And a school group of, you know, you could tell the, all the orange t-shirts came stomping in the, who were all probably four or five years old. And they were just like this, stunned. And here's this like cool looking dude, his hat's on backwards, he's got some t-shirt on, and he is thoroughly, totally focused on this giant six foot mm -hmm. thing. And they all just stood there staring at him, it was so great. And they really were looking at what he was doing. And he said to them, what do you think? It's so tall, how did you do that? Can, will you pick me up and can I put one on the top? And he said, you know what? I think I'm almost done. What if we knock it down? And they were like, no, no. And then one kid goes, yeah. <laughs> he 
and he said, okay, I'm just going to take this one out. All he had to do was pull one out, and the whole thing came crashing. And it, I, it was just thoroughly the coolest, mm -hmm. most engaged moment I'd just seen in a really long time. And every other family that had been working at a station on the floor, and there's probably six or eight stations of them on the floor, all just turned to watch this thing. And then all those kids helped him clean up the whole thing. I think the, the point you make, so we're always sort of struggling in that family learning with kids. Is it for kids with adults there or is it for families? And certainly in touching on things like blocks, which are just basic, the yeah. most basic thing, you don't have to have a label. You don't have to tell people what to do. You just throw the things out there. And I love them because everybody does love. They can find some joy in right. stacking something yeah. on top of something at any age, every age. I still love, I, that's what I love playing with my grandchildren is, right. you know, just building Legos, things. And, yeah, get and getting a cardboard box and yeah. seeing what we can right. do with it. So I think those kinds of interactive things are, are they come straight out of good working with kids and that they can apply because it's just good basic fun and learning at the same time, learning about you can have conversations about how you get something to stay up, what you need to stabilize, all of those sorts of things. So, I, I, But I think we can learn a lot by that, is that it's, it's it looking at what is the basic joy in, in doing and learning and, and moving from there. So it's about discovering and experimenting and seeing what happens if and all of, and that's what I think about the, the, those family programs that you've developed now over these last couple of years is that you're really getting them to see what happens if you do this, work together, here's a task, here's a problem to solve, what happens now when I do this? And so I think those are along that same, they're drawing on that, that kind of learning.